Moreno. I recently took over the bookstore in August of 2010 of the Toronto Women's Bookstore, so that's how I've come to be here. The event tonight was uh, Carmen Aguirre's launch of Something Fierce, Memoirs of a Revolutionary Daughter. As I'm reading it, I'm actually quite enjoying her experience, her life, um, what, it, what it's actually about in terms of her activity as an underground revolutionary. So that's been really fascinating to read. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. And I would actually like to dedicate the reading tonight to all of you who are here tonight who are survivors of the exact same thing that I talk about in this book. I don't want to put you on the spot. I uh, know that you know who you are. Gracias por todo lo que ustedes hicieron por Chile. The three of us hadn't looked back as we left our basement suite. Canada had taken us in after the coup in Chile five years earlier, but my mother had made it clear from day one that the refugee thing in the imperialist north was not for us. So our suitcases had been packed again, and our posters of Ho Chi Minh, Salvador Allende, and Tupac Amaru taken down and given away. <laughs> Rulo drove us to the airport in my mother's orange VW bug, and Mommy had several attacks of the giggles along the way because he'd only just learned to drive. Clutch, Rulo, clutch, you idiot, she yelled. Remember, little comrade, any experience is good. Stay calm, everybody. I've got everything under control. The man shouting those words was a U.S. mercenary wearing mirrored aviators. His forearms were covered in scars and the stench of booze oozed from his pores. And those fine details, were some of those there already or did you have to ask other people to remind you or how no. should you remember? No, I purposely never asked anybody to remind me because I wanted it to be 150% subjective memory uh, the way that I remembered it. Um, if I had started to ask the, the person I call Alejandro, which is not his real name by the way, um, or anybody else who had gone through the same experience, then it would be a different book. It would be more like a mm -hmm. testimonial of a bunch of different people. So I, I purposely did not do that. When my mother would, ever, would start to remind me of things, I'd go, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. I don't want that. I, I want it to be my totally subjective memory of what went down. Oh my God, I've heard it. Sure. He said that a lot of people from his generation romanticize what it's like to be a revolutionary and what would I say to those people that romanticize it? I would say that, um, well, to state the obvious, there's nothing romantic about it and that you have to be beyond committed to what you believe in to, to do it and I don't think that you can do it for more than a few years. To be deep. Yes, I always fantasize that someday I'll live there again. I'm not a, a supporter at all of the current government, which is a right-wing government. Um, Chile is a country that is very sick. It has never really, on a national level, some people here might disagree with me, uh, done any real healing work about what happened during the dictatorship. Very close friends of mine who were just there told me that even now, that was always my experience going back to Chile, and they verified that even now, in mainstream Chile, uh, you just don't talk about it, and if you want to talk about it, you whisper, right? In, in mainstream Chile. Obviously, there's a subculture like there is in every country. There's lots of other subcultures and alternative cultures, but in the mainstream, if you're going to talk about Pinochet, if you're going to talk about Allende, if you're going to talk about what happened, uh, you whisper. Yes, I mean, I, I would be very afraid to, to go to Chile to, to, to do what I'm doing here. I would be very afraid to do that. So. Exactly. <laughs> In Chile. I, I don't know that I would do that. And, and the way that it's written, it's really accessible to everyone. It's really, and it's done in a comic way as well. So that there's sort of that twist on it, and that's what actually enticed me to read it, thinking that it would, it would, it would differ from the actual regular Chilean novels of, or um, yeah, the issues of what happened during the years. 
Mi nombre es Magdalena Díaz y yo soy originalmente, de, crecí en Chile, estoy en Canadá por eh, el golpe militar. Mi familia vino aquí en, a principios del 75, finales del 74, salimos de, de Chile. Me emocionó mucho, me emocionó mucho porque eh, cada vez que, que se toca el tema y, y yo creo que hay muchos de los chilenos que no queremos tocar el tema porque despierta muchas memorias y memorias que a veces nosotros no queremos eh, tener presente. Entonces, eh, al escucharla, esas memorias se despiertan y, y uno comienza a pensar en la propia historia que uno tiene. Y, y entonces en ese sentido eh, afecta, afecta profundamente y uh, le, cuando terminó de, de hablar yo estaba en primera fila y me, me levanté y todo lo que podía decirle es gracias, o sea, gracias por contar la historia, gracias por, eh, por el testimonio. Entonces, eh, por eso o sea, estoy aquí y compré dos libros, compré uno para mi hija porque mi hija se interesa mucho por el tema del de exilio y por qué estamos aquí en Canadá. Eh, ella nació aquí en Canadá, pero se siente muy chilena y el otro lo compré para mi mamá.